he seems to be serious he seems to be introvert person and uh, he really cares about the people around around him it 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 is another matter that he is also a hypocritic in his approach but we can say that most important we we compare the character of Falzer known and jack so jack seems to be more serious about not only the things around him but about the relations to but Algernon on the other side doesn't seem very serious about the things. Yeah, so we can say that by the outlooks of the characters, you can easily judge by the talking of the character, you can easily judge that who seems to be uh, sensible and who seems to be a little bit non serious. Yeah, it is, you can say, how the characters are evaluated. Okay, that's good. Okay, so here we go. I think this is the same page because the file just opened. It belongs to the same previous file and it just opened from the same page, isn't it? Hmm. Okay, are you done with this one or not? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me see. We can read it. Sir, we will start from uh, the dialogue of Jack. Very well then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, starting from this page. Okay, then. It's okay. We can start from here. So, LG or known, he says the only way to behave to a woman is to make love to her if she is pretty and to someone else if she is plain. Jack, oh, that is nonsense. Because LG, you, you, uh, as we've already talked about, LG sees the women from only one side, like from his seductive feeling that how he must not get engaged into some serious relationship, but he must be on uh, with the with the with the female or with the girl only have a temporary relationship and you also see that even though your actions they decide something about your serious personality or non serious personality if algernon thinks about the relations like this he is also not stable he is also not permanent he changes his mercurial nature changes with the passage of time so that is the reason that algae he seems to be, I would say, not a stable character, not a sensible character, not a serious character. On the other side, you see that the expression of Jack, who sees not at the women from only one angle, because he is not actually after the lust of something, but he is entirely engaged in some serious feelings with the Gavendalan. And that is the reason that we can say or difference between both of the brothers. Okay, then Algy says, what about your brother? So you, definitely you have already talked about that your brother, Ernest, he is, uh, like when he comes to from, from the country house, so he's all the time excusing that I have my brother whom we are going to meet. So he says that, what about your brother? What about the... Profligate Ernest. Profligate means the one who spends extravagantly. Jack, oh, before the end of the week, I shall have got rid of him. I'll say he died in Paris of poplixy. Poplixy is what it is. It is a disease, definitely. And uh, what this disease all, uh, is all about. Uh, this is, I think, what it is, I forgot about it. That what is apple. Don't they find suddenly? I'll just say yes, but it is. Hereditary. 
hereditary means that it is the fellow had much better say a spiritual say that okay that he was diseased with uh, apoplexy it means that he and he died with that apoplexy that was a famous disease at that time and he said that but it's a uh, hereditary disease hereditary disease means that it comes from the families like it has some uh, genetical you can say infusion and uh, transformation trans transmission into the generation so my dear brother this is not appropriate to say that because if you will say that okay that we uh, he was diseased with apoplexy apoplexy then what will happen aunt brecknell and on the other side the vandalen they will be more they will they will more care about this thing they will be conscious about this thing because if your brother has this disease apoplexy then might be you also have this disease so you must not say that this is apoplexy because this is a family disease this transfer from father to son and the daughter and go on so do not say this so you had much better say a severe chill so you can say that it was a severe cold or severe chill that took his life jack you are sure a severe chill isn't hereditary or anything of that kind yeah definitely we know that it is it is because of the climate i just says that of course isn't it is not a family disease it doesn't come from uh from the people like your father and and the other family members jack very well then my dear my poor brother ernest is carried off suddenly in paris by a severe chill so that gets read up so now they found it they found an excuse and what is that excuse that the, the brother the imaginary brother actually died of a chill a severe chill a severe cold and that's got to be rid of ajinar but i thought you said that miss tardy was a little too much interested in your poor brother ernest what she feel he his loss a good deal so now you see that mr miss cardio who is actually warden to jack as well so jack was also telling about miss cardio that she seems a little interested in my brother whenever i come from the country to the city so she seems less interested because i have to say only that i'm going to meet with him and she says okay fine you can go so she seems less interested so if the you, your brother dies or not do you think that it will be a it will be a uh, i would say a serious thing to to uh, to do something with the uh, with with mr cardio do you really think that it has to do something with mr cardio won't she feel his loss a good deal jack oh that is all right cicely is not a silly romantic girl i'm glad to say she's got a capital appetite goes long walks and pays no attention at all at her lesson to her lessons so on the other side yeah it is the case that she seems um, less interested in this and then she he talks about the cicely who is cicely cicely is not a silly romantic girl i'm glad to say she has got a capital appetite like definitely people are materialistic in the elite classes so they have material of the capital goes long walks and pays no attentions at her lessons as i would rather rather like to see cicely because this is you know that how jack is actually making algernon some stories or some you can say uh, he's cooking something just to know that cicely is an attractive girl she cicely is an independent girl she is a good reader and uh, jack i will take very good care you never do she is excessively pretty and she is only just 18 so now these are the things that will be appealing as a norm that she is pretty she is excessively she is pretty she is um, a good reader on not a good reader she is a reader on the other side she is just 18 so she is independent too 
as in, have you told the Vandalin yet that you have an excessively pretty boy who is only just 18? Now, he is also saying the same thing to that, okay, have you told the Vandalin about, about Sizzly, that you have a ward like, named Sizzly, who's just 18 and she's very beautiful? Jack, oh, one doesn't blurt these things out to people. So there is nothing to tell about. There is nothing to, to, to show off. Blurt means to show off these things out to people. Even though when, whenever they are not interested to listen, whenever they, there is no way to talk about that thing. If you're talking about something else, so there is no way to go and jump into it. And you may say that, okay, I have a word that is very beautiful. So there is no logic in saying this thing. Sizzly and Gavendalin are Sizzly. And Gavendalin are perfectly certain to be extremely great friends. I'll bet you anything you like. That half an hour after they have met, they will be calling each other sisters. So I bet you that Gavandan and Sizi are going to be perfect friends for one another. I'm going to, I'm, I'm telling you. Might be, he has said from a point of view that they both are beautiful. They both are belonging to the same class. And again, the same gender. And then they have the same interests. That is the reason, as you said, that they are going to be the best friend ever, the great friends. But as you says, as you, women only do that when they have called each other a lot of other things first. Yeah, it means that they have they start calling each other now. Now this is, I think, the pain that. Uh, uh, the female can only understand, the girls can only understand. Because I think yesterday or uh, two days two days before, I was just watching a post in which uh, I, I, I do not want to mention the character. The one character is actually putting a knife on the throat of to, to the next character. And uh, then there was another clip of the picture in the same frame, and that was that in the, another picture, they both were together and sharing their love with one another, coxing their shoulders with one another. Like in one frame, there were two pictures. The one, one picture was showing, showing, showing that uh, they both have, like, uh, I would say, the worst enemies that ever. And in the next picture, they were both were friends together. And uh, in the first picture, one guy was actually <laughs> keeping the knife on the throat of the next. So they it seemed that there was a description, caption on that picture that uh, uh, when the sisters have clashes or something like that, like when the sisters are actually uh, enemies and in the next picture when they have love. So it seems that the same situation that uh, when he was calling that, yes, women only do that when they have called each other a lot of other things first. So first of all, they are not good friends at all. They are first enemy, enemies, I would say. And after that, they become friends. And you know, this is the story with the brothers too. First of all, they would fight with each other all the time and then they, they became friends. So he talks about that, that first of all, they are not. But after that, they will become good friends. They can be. Now, my dear boy, if, if we want to get a good table at Willie's, we really must go and dress. Do you know it is nearly seven, Jack? So now they also have to attend at this in the, the dinner. Oh, it's always in nearly seven. LG, well, I'm hungry. Jack, I never knew you when you are not. So you go all the time hungry. LG, what shall we do after dinner? Go to theater? Jack, oh no, I love listening. I hate listening. LG, well, let us go to the club. Jack, oh no, I hate talking. It means that uh, now you can see that might be he is overwhelmed with the feel feelings, feelings for the Vendelin, or might be he is preoccupied with the 
uh, with with the seriousness of his character that he is entirely into it. So there can be two reasons: that whether that he does not like to go for listening in the theater, he he does not want to go to the club where he need, needs to talk with the people, and he says that I hate talking to. And you can also see that it seems to be the ambivalent, the ambivalent condition of uh, of Jack, that he is, seems to be totally indecisive. He cannot decide something for himself that whether he must go or whether he must not. So he is totally indecisive. He cannot decide anything for his own. As you well, we might trot round to the empire at dawn. Then we can walk. Jack, oh no, I can't bear looking at things. It's so silly. It means he doesn't feel comfortable in any situation. And you, well, what shall we do, Jack? Nothing. So this is the the, the good thing that one can do. Nothing. And it is awfully hard work doing nothing. However, I don't mind hard work here, where there is no definite object of any kind. I can do hard work in only one condition if there is nothing to do. I just when I, I I'm reading this line, there comes in my mind something related to this. You might have heard the name "Waiting for Godot." Waiting for Godot. Waiting for Godot, in which there is a character, uh, Pozo, Lucky, and there are many other characters also. So they are all the time waiting and waiting for someone to come, and they say there is one uh, very famous dialogue that nothing comes, nothing goes. It is awful. So it reminds me of that. Like they are all the time standing and sitting and waiting for someone, and no one comes. No one comes, and the play ends. And that considered to be one of the most, I would say, the famous play. Belonging to the theater of absurd, and there is nothing that there is nothing that they do. There are dialogues, there are situations that really appeal the people. It's you can say a critique of that society in other in other in other world. So he says that nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, and the lane. Uh, he says then, Miss Fairfax, and take the Wendelin. Lane goes out. Servant goes out. When Gavendlan enters into the room, Algy, Gavendlan, upon my word, Gavendlan, Algy, kindly turn your back. I have something very particular to say to Mister Worthing. So I have something to say to Mister Worthing, but you have to turn your back. You have to turn your face for a while. So I have some secret to discuss, or I have something else because they both are lovers. So we can say that, or we can expect expect that thing from them. And uh, as he really given, I don't think I can allow this sort of. So I won't allow this. Could be being a cousin. He just uh, uh, teasing Gavendlin. Gavendlin, LG, you always adopt a sickly immoral attitude towards life. So do not do this. You are not quite old enough to do that. Now they. Comes another thing. You are not quite old enough to do that because this is only the responsibility or the obligation of the old people that they can stop and they can uh, not allow these things to happen in the society or in the home. But you are not too much old, so you are young enough, so you must appreciate such things. So do not do that. And Elgin not retires to the fireplace. Jack, my own darling. And Gavel Gavendlan. Now you see that Gavendlan that she is having an instable character. You know that in, in the previous text that we knew her that she is totally and she's she was totally into Jack. Like she was talking about her love feeling. She was talking about that how much she loves Jack and uh, with the name too. So she seems. To, Totally an engrossed character in the previous text, but now you see that how unstable nature she has. She will just take a quick turn, and what is that? Gavendlan, Ernest, we may never be married. 
that was too quick. We may never be married. From the expression on Mama's face, I fear we never shall, we never shall be married. Few parents nowadays pay attention or pay any regard to what their children say to them. The old-fashioned respect for the young is fast dying down. The old-fashioned respect for the young is fast dying down. Look at the expression of the grandparents. You know the respect must be of the parents. Respect must be of their elders, not of their youngsters. Like they are given respect because you know the families, they are all the time thinking about and taking care of their children. It doesn't happen somewhere or anywhere in the world. But what Gwendolyn thinks, she thinks that the old fashioned respect for the young, for the young, is past time now. So it is no more. It means that she thinks that we must also be respected in the same way as the parents are respected by us. But I think that, like, I'm not, this is my saying, but it seems that she will be finding the respect for herself if she is respecting the parents. Then in that thing, in that sense, she will also be finding the respect. Okay, whatever influence I ever had over Mama, I lost at the age of three. But although she may prevent us from becoming man and wife, and I may marry someone else and marry often, nothing that she can possibly do can alter my or can change my eternal devotion to you. Wow. It, it seems that now Gavandla, she is a cunning lady, a clever, smart one. How she actually makes the scene here? She said that, okay, because uh, my mother doesn't seem to agree with you or with your, I do not know. But I think that I will be, if I'm not getting married to you, but if I'll get married to someone else, so if I do not marry one time more oftenly, then I, my devotion will remain same to, for you. The devotion of love will remain same for you. Might be... Yes. That it means Algernon was right. Uh, about what? Yes, uh, about uh, uh, the Vandalin. Can you please explain? Because I just forget about the previous thing. That's what it is about. Because I do not have said too many things. So there is a lot of noise. I was saying that Algernon was right about uh, a happy marriage life in which uh, uh, a husband or wife must have another one in their life. Yeah, extra matrimonial relationships or even though some uh, extra relationships. Okay, is my voice not clear? It is clear, sir. Okay, that's fine. So we were talking about that uh, how she is now quickly changing her subject, how he, she is quickly changing her feelings from the love feelings to devotion, how she has become a devotee. And she said that, okay, whether I marry you or marry someone else, my feelings, my love feelings will remain the same. Jack, dear Gavandlan, now even though Jack is still in the, in the charm or in the trance of that love feelings, but whatever she is saying that Jack can never imagine. And uh, Gavendra says the story of your romantic origin as related to me by Mama with unpleasing comments has naturally stirred the deeper fibers of my nature. The, the story, the story, the romantic, the romantic origin about your romantic origin, because you know that Lady Bracknell, she already knew about the base about the origin, about the birth of Jack, and she didn't like that. Because she thinks that if someone else will be asking about me that, okay, how and who is your who is your son-in-law, then what I will tell them, what I will tell them, that who is he? Because he does not have a family history, he does not have <clears throat> his parents, is a lost and adopted child. 
so might be she is conscious about that thing and she didn't she didn't let the vendlen decide that you must go for jack the story of the romantic origin so if this is this is the other thing that really uh, right up the things your christian name has an irresistible fascination but though your name has a irresistible irresistible christian sorry fascination you see that how easily that thing can be done by the vendlen like the love feelings that they had developed for one another and suddenly she is saying that okay uh, yeah it is fine but i am getting married with someone else and uh, uh, it it will be that i'll be loving you forever and ever and if it if it if happens so you know that 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 will be something uh, not good with the person whom she will join or whom she will she will marry <clears throat> but this is you can say her point of view the simplicity of your character makes you exquisitely incomprehensible to me your town address at the albany i have what is your address in the country because jack on the other sense he is not a fully exposed and fully revealed character to the bandon as well <clears throat> because he also feels fear that if he will be revealing her his self he will be revealing his real identity he will be revealing his exposing his real name that is not ernest but jack or jack worthy so he only jack and what will happen that she will definitely go far away from me and she will definitely uh, break up with me and she says that okay i know that the character the simplicity of your character makes you exquisitely incomprehensible to me but your phone address town address at the albany i have what about the country address jack the manor house woolton hertfordshire and when he was saying this as your known as a known a clever man who has been carefully listening smiles to himself and writes the address on his shirt cuff then picks up the railway guide soon when he was writing that name of the uh, the address given by jack of the country house so he was writing on the cuff and he then picked a railway guide because he just need to catch the train to reach the same address that is told by jack because he is in a in a real sense inquisitive to know about the real origin of jack and on the other side there is some another purpose of going into the country house because as you know he is totally admired by sisley card and that is the reason that he will go for look uh, go looking for sisley to in the country house because you know that jack all the time kept on talking about sisley is beautiful she is pretty and she is this and that so these are the two things first of all as you know will go for the country in the country house to know about little bit more jack about the jack about jack on the other side he will also be going to meet sisley also the vandalen <clears throat> there is a good postal service i suppose so is there a good postal so now i think this is a sprinkling of salt on the wounds <laughs> that you are asking for that do you have a postal service uh, available at your area it may be necessary to do something desperate like whenever i feel desperate i can send you some letter i can send you something from my side that of course will require serious consideration i will communicate with you daily so if you have some a postal service available at your area so just tell me because i'll be sending you letters daily i'll communicate with you because if you do not get married so it's okay we can be friends I, I i i i would say that hardly uh, stop i can stop my laughing on this thing jack my own one 
Commandant, how long do you remain in town? Jack, till Monday. Commandant, good, LG. You may turn round now. So Commander says that okay, yes, LG, you can turn around, you can turn round now. Because we are done, we are done talking, so you can turn your face to uh, to us. I just thanks I have turned round already. Commander, you may also also ring the bell. Yeah. So you may also ring the bells because you know that I just need to go, so you can ring the bell. Jack, you will let me see you to to you to your carriage, my own darling? Commander certainly. So I am going. So you can also call. Uh, you can also ring the bell so that Lane may come and we can go to the carriage because carriage is already waiting. So Jack says that uh, can I? Will uh, sorry, you will let me see you to your carriage. Can I walk you to the carriage? And she says certainly. Why not? Jack to Lane, who now enters. I will see this paperwork out when yes sir. Jack and Gavendra go off. Lane presents several letters on a salver to Algernon. It is to be surmised that they are bills, as Algernon after looking at the envelopes tears them up. So these are the bills. Bills of the parties, bills of the other things that he received. Algernon, glass of sherry, Lane. Leave these bills. And by tearing them up, a glass of sherry, wine. Lane, yes, sir. And then tomorrow, Lane, I'm going bunkering. And yes, sir. As you know, I shall probably not be back till Monday. You can put up my dress clothes, my smoking jacket, and uh, all the bunbury suits. So you can pack all these things in my briefcase because I am just leaving tomorrow for my. For, for Bunbury. So Bunbury is another imaginative character that Algernon has actually, uh, I would say, created for his own selves, just to be, just to give birth of the, of, uh, of, uh, I would say, from the city life, or the people around here. Lane says, yes sir, handing Sherry, so he is actually offering him the wine, a special wine. Algernon, I hope tomorrow will be fine day. Now, as you know, says that I hope tomorrow will be a fine day, Lane. And Lane says, it never is, sir. It never. So how, what as you know, will say, you are a perfect pessimist. Like you are not thinking, like sometimes as we say that, okay, inshallah, it will go well. And if someone says, no, it will not. So how it will. So you are a perfect pessimist. Lane, I do my best to give satisfaction, sir. So I give my best to do so, to feel the other person the same as you are saying that I'm a perfect pessimist. And her Jack Lane goes off. Jack, there's a sensible, intellectual girl, and the only girl I've ever cared in my life for in my life. As you know, is laughing immoderately. <clears throat> immoderately. What on earth are you so amused at? LG, oh, I am a little anxious about poor Banbury, that is all. So, like, he seems uh, confused, he seems worried. And uh, Jack asks, then, what is the, the thing that makes you worried about? Jack, if you don't take care, your friend Banbury will get you into a serious scrap someday. So, he is just going to drag you in a serious trouble someday if you do not do something with Banbury. Because that is also an imaginative one. So you have to get rid of him as well. Because I, I am also going to do that. So you can also do that. And as you know, says that I love scraps. I love scraps. They are the only things that are never serious. Otherwise, the, all the things around me are very serious. So as I've already told, the Jack seems to be as you know, seems to be a non-serious character and yes he doesn't take anything serious and he doesn't take anything uh, close to his heart as well he says that i don't care about these things rather i like crafts i like the, like the things that are messed up so they are the only thing that never get serious otherwise everything is jack oh that's nonsense lg you never talk anything but nonsense lg 
nobody ever does. Jack looks indignantly at him, leaves the room. Algernon lights a cigarette, reads his shirt cuffs, and smiles. So now you can say that how a <clears throat> A repressed smile, a villainous smile, I will call it. A villainous smile will be <clears throat> on the face of Algernon when he looks at his look up his uh, shirt cuff and smiles because he sees what it is there. There is the address, address of Jack's house in the country, and he looks at the cuff and he smiles. And then the second act starts with. The scene, garden at the manor house, a flight of grey stone steps. So you can see that what it is, what is the manor house looks like. There is a flight of grey stone steps lead up to the house, and the garden, an old-fashioned one, full of roses. Time of year is July. Then there are some basket chairs and a table. Covered with books, are set under a large yew tree. So there is a tree, yew tree. Then they are sitting. Some people are sitting under that, under the shadow of that yew tree. There are some chairs. There is one table, and on that table there are some books compiled in a sequence. And uh, along with there are some steps. And after the steps there is the house. So this is a. You can say the the scene at a at the manor house. Miss Prism discovered seated at the table. Sisley is at the back, watering flowers. So now, when I was talking about this thing, so you can easily imagine. You can easily imagine. You can create a mental picture in your mind that how this thing is look like, how this thing looks like. Like you can see that okay, there is a. Uh, there is bunch of trees, and then there is one house, and there are some steps, and along with this, with those steps, there are three or four chairs and a table, and uh, some uh, like sisley, and on the other side, Miss Prism, they are under that tree. Sisley is watering the flower, and on the other side, Miss Prism, she is sitting on the table. Okay, starts with Miss Miss Prism. P means prison. Calling, Sizzly, Sizzly, surely such a utilitarian occupation as the watering of flowers is rather Malton's duty than yours. It is not duty. It is a duty of some other people, like belonging to the other classes, like poor or old. This is not your duty, especially at a moment when intellectual pleasures await you. Your German grammar is on the table. Pray open it at page fifteen. We will repeat yesterday's lesson. So you have to come here. Do not water the flowers because this is not your duty. If you really want to be humanist, you have to come here, and you have to see your German grammar lesson that you uh, repeated yesterday. So you have to repeat your yesterday's lesson right now. And it is on page fifteen. Sizzly, uh, coming over very slowly because with this expression you can say that she seems disinterested in the studies, same like you. So she seems she's coming very slowly. And uh, but I don't like German. It isn't at all a becoming language. I know perfectly well. That I look quite plain after my German lesson. I don't like this. I don't like it because it isn't at all a becoming language. Because German, you know that it is a not an easy language to learn, and it is becoming a uh, isn't at all a becoming language. Means that I cannot understand any word of it. I cannot understand what it is all about because German, French, these languages. I would say that. Uh, it is said about the French language that whatever is not understandable, it is not French. It means they have the meanings and words for everything, everything. As you know, that we have totally altered our languages. 
we have totally changed our language if i ask you about uh, a certain of it then you might be not be able to respond it only a few will like if i if i will ask you that okay what you can call a tree in punjabi what is tree in punjabi anyone yes what is a tree called in punjabi anyone no it is not it's not even the fade no it is not okay should i give you this task to find out that what is the name of any tree in punjabi okay so the kicker is the it is only one tree out of the categories of many trees this is only one one tree like you can say shisham kicker desi kicker and then people and there are many others board like there are many trees so kicker is only one tree one category of the tree i'm asking about that what is the name punjabi name of a tree so this is even though if you if someone asks you about that over then definitely you will tell that it is tree because we know more about the language you do and uh, up, after that we do we know more about about urdu language but we do not know anything about this so i would not say that english has become second language i would say that english has become the first language and urdu has become the second language punjabi has become the third language hmm. okay uh, tree is called rukh rukh rukhan but okay, that is a tree in punjabi okay there are i would say that there are many also other names and words for some some things uh, about the things about the situation about the people that we don't understand because we just we are far away from our native culture we are far away from our urdu language we are just getting more and more into this one so like even though you cannot imagine that when i go to my village and i just sit with my elders my grandfathers and uh, all of the other people who know the history actually from a close i would say days and they have observed them and most of the time i go over there i i ask about the things that i don't know i ask about the things related to their experience and certain like i sit over there for more than hours and hours and i'm just looking at their hands looking at their face because i can see that in the wrinkles of their faces and ha- face and hands in every wrinkle there is a chapter of history and i all the time do that even though my grandmother she used to tell me the stories about india that how she tra- uh, were migrated from that place to here and i listened them carefully and even though i feel most of the time a regretful and sometimes remorseful on this thing that i had all my recordings but again suddenly my mobile was stolen and that all the recordings were also gone otherwise i had the language the way they are speaking the way they are actually having the history and all of the other things you cannot imagine that and it it gives me all the time pleasure like even though when i was in the in the in the village तो उनके जो मीनिंग्स है या उनके मेटाफर्स हैं वो बहुत ही डिफरेंट होते हैं और बहुत ही कमाल के होते हैं तो लाइक मैं इसी तरीके से गलतियां थी तो मैं दरखत के नीचे बैठा हुआ था अपने दादाजू के साथ तो चार पाई पे थी और इर्द गिर्द गाँव को पता है कि वही गाँव का माहौल होता है और जो धूप थी कीकर का दरख्त उसके नीचे बैठे तो धूप जो है उसमें से कुछ छाव भी थी और कुछ जो है धूप भी आ रही थी तो मैंने कहा ये कैसी धूप है ना थोड़ी सी छाव भी है और थोड़ी सी उन्होंने एक वर्ड बोला तितर खंबी यानी कि जो तीतर है तीतर के अगर आप उसके जो खंभ है या उसके जो फैदर्स हैं अगर आप उसको देखें ना तो वो आप उसे कह सकते हैं कि वो हाफ शेडेड हैं यानी कि वो ऐसे होते हैं कि जिसमें जो है वो थोड़ा सा नजर भी आ रहा है थोड़ा सा नजर नहीं आ रहा अगर आपने कभी तीतर को देखा हो तो जब उन्होंने उसको उसके साथ तस्वीर दी 
आप इमेजिन करें कि मैं काफी देर तक इस चीज को सोचता रहा कि हाउ ब्यूटीफुल दिस लैंग्वेज इज टू कि ये सिर्फ इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज में ये मेटाफर्स और सिमिलीज नहीं है हमारी पंजाबी लैंग्वेज में भी है कि कैसे वो जो आई मैं से कि वो जो हाफ लीडन जो रेज हैं रेज ऑफ द सन व्हेन दे कम अक्रॉस फ्रॉम द ट्री फ्रॉम द लीव्स ऑफ द ट्री तो वो जो आप कह लें कि थोड़ा सा हाफ शेडोड जो है रेज ऑफ द सन उसको किस तरीके से एक तितर कम भी एंड आई वाज अमेज्ड एंड आई ओ द टाइम लुक के क्या अच्छा वर्ड है इससे अच्छा उसके लिए कोई और वर्ड हो ही नहीं सकता था it means that is the only one thing that you can but there are many and many other things that they have so i all the time used to do this to jitne bhi wo aksar jo hai wo proverbs istemal karte hain to verb jitne bhi punjabi ke proverbs hain wo maine kafi had tak jo hai wo matlab ke unko seekha hai aur unko padhta rehta hu aur sunta rehta hu aur wo badi kamaal ki unme jo hai wo ek depth hoti hai badi kamaal ki depth hoti hai to like I think that this language must not die out. It must, must also, must also live forever. But in which you can have, which things, in some kind of way, are changing. So that it means that language is now going to extinct. Punjabi language, especially. So you people have to do something. I, I am all the time thinking, and I am all the time like have this idea in my mind: what to do with this? What to do with this? Because I certainly cannot do that. But because you know that the my profession my field is different but i can only appreciate the people to to connect with their origin to connect with their roots to connect with their languages as well like if urdu is there then you can also so on the other side english language is only a language and we must think that do not do not overwhelm this language on your personalities and your minds as well but okay this is everything and this is all This English language isn't a culture. Isn't it? It isn't. You can say a custom or a tradition. This is only a language. So take this only a language. Do not do something more with this language. Okay. It means that you have learned this language, and that that is all. On the other things, there are the religion is your own. The customs are your own. The, the culture is your own. Celebrate them. But you, the language that you have learned, that is only. your ability that you have learned something except those who in punjabi so language must be dealt with like a language instead of you are just having or keeping it as a culture or as a lifestyle or as a everything as a power a powerful tool sometimes because we are using this uh, i would say that lethal weapon like a lethal weapon against the people who don't speak english means that uh, I don't like German. Isn't at all becoming a language. This present child, you know how anxious your guardian is. Guardian is Jack. That you should improve yourself in every way. Might be Jack is a little bit worried about little Sizzly because might he thinks that Sizzly is going to be after some time or after some day she is going to be. like the women who live in the cities so if she will be speaking german and if she will be speaking more than one languages or if she will be just maintaining her lifestyle so then it will be an easy thing for her to uh, to to acclimatize in the environment in the new environment or in the new city life so that is the reason that he is actually jack is much conscious about Sizzly, he laid particular stress on your German as he was leaving for town yesterday. So yesterday he went to town and he said that you must focus on German language language especially. Indeed, he always lays stress on your German when he is leaving for town. So all the time he stresses on your language, especially on German language, that you must do this. Okay. it seems that there is another reason that we can we can find here uh might be that she he jack does not want the vandalin sorry uh, does not want uh, sizzly to think about jack whenever he is gone to city that what 
does he do over there and what is he uh, doing over there in every weekend so that is the reason jack is asking seriously to focus on the german lessons whenever he is about to leave for city so that is the reason that she must not think about jack that what does he do every weekend in the city or in the town Sisley, dear Uncle Jack is so very serious. Sometimes he is so serious that I think he cannot be quite well. That he is not mentally healthy. He is not mentally well. Sometimes I think about that. He is too serious, too much serious. Miss Prism, drawing herself up. Your guardian enjoys the best of health, and his gravity of demeanor is especially to be commended in one. So comparatively young as he is, demeanor means that he is not acting like uh, uh, you can say the the other social customs. So demeanor can also be that uh, non-verbal social behavior, those social manners, non-verbal social behavior. Like he is not like the other people. I know no one who has a higher sense of duty and responsibility. So he is the one who has the who has the sensible approach to life. he has a sensible duty high sense of duty and responsibility but i do not see any man belonging to this age have this uh, i would say this sense of duty or this sense of obligation rather i will see that every man they are non serious about their things about so he is a responsible man sisley is poor i suppose that is why he often looks a, looks a little bored when we three are together so he is all the time serious and he looks bored miss uh, 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 prison sisley i'm surprised at you mr worthing has many troubles in his life idle merriment and triviality would be out of the place in his conversation so he has he had many things in his life he had many problems and issues in his life so that is the reason that the idle merriment the happiness and the triviality would are actually to totally out of his conversation you cannot see that they, that he spoke without any purpose or without any objective and on the other side he doesn't seem totally happy at all because he has nothing to laugh upon he has nothing to spy, smile upon that is the reason that he is serious you must remember this constant anxiety about that unfortunate unfortunate young man his brother and might be he is worried about his brother his young man a young brother sisley i wish uncle jack would allow that unfortunate young man his brother to come down here sometimes if that really exists kyunki ab thoda sa aap dekhenge like they are also doubtful about the identity of the man who has been used as a coy as a bait as a dummy and uh, you see that he is what is he doing she is saying that okay then i think that he must tell us about his brother also he may also come down here sometimes so we so we may understand yeah that that is this is your real brother so why don't doesn't he do that we might have a good influence over him is prison because family you know family does have a good influence on the people who are actually not well who are having some issues and problems because when they when the things are communicated between the family members or among the family members then the things are resolved so why doesn't he bring his brother down here and might be we can create a good influence on him i'm sure you certainly would you know german and geology and things of that kind influence a man very much so these are the thing that will influence him or about these all things so sisley begins to write in her diary so sisley she writes a diary this prism she is shaking her head i do not think that even i could produce any effect on a character that according to his own brother's admission is irretrievably weak and vacillating indeed i am not sure that i would desire to reclaim him okay leave this leave two or three lines because she talks about that uh, even though situation is very wavering situation is very weak 
so I cannot ask you sometimes about this whether or might be he will be losing his brother uh, at any moment so that will not be fine to ask about this thing so it will be uh, just drag into into more worries into more anxiety so that is the reason I do not do it. okay then Sisley I really don't see why you why you should keep a diary at all that you are older than writing a diary with you uh, writing a diary and keeping it with you Sisley I keep a diary in order to enter the wonderful secrets of my life if I didn't write them down I should probably forget all about them so that is the reason I, I, I write a diary to just keep my secrets and keep my history alive Sisley, yes but it uh, Miss Prism memory my dear Sisley is the diary that we all carry about us Sisley, yes, but it usually chronicles the thing that have never happened and couldn't possibly have happened. I believe that memory is responsible for nearly all the three volume novels that Moody sends us. So Moody is a library, library, a famous library in that time. So Moody sends us three volumes of novels. And now Miss Prism for the first time will also disclose that she has also written one. And what, what does she say? Do not speak uh, slightingly of the three volume novels, Sisley. I wrote one myself in early days. Sisley, did you really, Miss Prism? How wonderfully clever you are. I hope it did not end happily. I don't like novels that end happily. Now, the depression. This is, I would say, that all about the modern man and the modern woman, too. Like they are short-tempered most of the time. They are not stable in their thinking much of the time. Because they do not take too much time to think over something. Or I think that we are all out of our patience too. That we cannot listen to somebody in, in, in much detail. We will say we are. Do it quickly. I have uh, other things to do. Do it quickly. So you have to do it. Okay. So it means that might be this is a depression. This is a depression that has changed, that has to totally change the people's mind and the mind of Sisley too and mind of Miss Prism too. So Miss Prism says, uh, yeah, so Sisley first of all says that I don't like novels that end happily. They depress me so much. Another a dichotomy you can say, a juxtaposition. Miss Prism, the good ending happy and the bad unhappy. That is what fiction means. Sisley, I suppose so, but it seems very unfair. And was your novel ever published? Miss Prism, alas. No. The manuscript, unfortunately, was abandoned. I use the word in the sense of lost or mislaid. To your work, child, these speculations are profitless. So, because you were interested in in the depressions in the in, in the ending that lead to the characters or the or the story uh, to the to a worst end, so that will not give you any profit in that. Sisley smiling, but I see dear Doctor Chisibel coming up through the garden now. And then Sisley, she seems not. I would say good to talk about. To go to talk uh, Miss Prism and now when she sees when she really sees that someone is coming and that is actually Dr. Canon Chisibel who is actually coming to the garden and Dr. Chisibel he seems to be he seems to be a little bit interested in Miss Prism Miss Prism and Sisley knows that rising and advancing Dr. Chisibel this is indeed a pleasure and the canon chisibel tells and how are we this morning miss prism you are i trust well sisley miss prism has sisley says on behalf of miss prism miss sisley has just been complaining about a slight headache even though she doesn't feel any headache at all but sisley says that she is feeling headache because she knows about that how dr chisibel has some 
uh, feelings of care and affection towards this prison. So, might be she's just played here and she says that she's complaining of a slight headache. I think it would do her so much good to have a short stroll with you in the park. So, you can have a walk in the garden, both of you. Might be it will give you, it will give her a little bit relief from the headache. Like it seemed that uh, Cicely was thinking that, okay, you are just eating me up. You are just telling me what to do and what not to. It's better to go with me, Dr. Chosible to stall in the garden. So that will give me leave actually, not to you. So that was the thing that I think that she was thinking. Because she was not okay or she was not fine to talk with Miss, Pr uh, Miss Prism. Cicely, I have not mentioned anything about the headache. Cicely, no, dear Miss Prism, I know that, but I felt indistinctively that you had a habit. Indeed, I was thinking about that and not about my German lesson when the vector came in. So I was thinking about you, I was just taking, I was caring about you that you had a headache. I hope, Cicely, you are not inattentive. Rather, she is inattentive, actually. Okay, Cicely, oh, I am afraid I am. Chess. That is strange. Were I fortunate enough to be Miss Prism's pupil, I would hang upon her lips. So this is what we were talking about. That he seems to be seems to be having some feelings of love and affection towards Miss Prism. So he says that I would love to be Miss Prism's pupil, Miss Prism's student. I would hang upon her lips. Miss Prism glares. She clears at Miss Chisibel. I spoke metaphorically. My metaphor was drawn from these. <clears throat> Mr. Worthing, I suppose, has not returned from uh, town yet. And on the other side, he said that I spoke it metaphorically. I used a metaphor here to talk about, to draw another situation in this thing. So this was not a literal word, rather it was the metaphorical word or metaphorical expression. So now he is in talking, he talks about that, okay, uh, what about Mr. Jack, Mr. Worthing, in other sense. I suppose that has not returned from town yet. Miss Prism, we do not expect him till Monday afternoon. Yes. Ah, yes. He usually likes to spend his Sunday in London. He is not one of those whose sole aim is enjoyment. So he's a sober, a serious man. So now it seems that Chizibal is happy, quite happy now, because of the absence of Mr. Worthing. Because if he is not at home now, Dr. Chizibal and Miss Prism, they can they can spend some time together. As by all accounts, that unfortunate young man, his brother seems to be. So his brother also seems to be ill because because of the thing that he just visits the town, his brother. But I must not disturb. Ajuria and her pupil any longer. So now you see that Dr. Chusable, he seems to be also a, a literary man, a clever man who is using some, uh, you can say, particular allusions or references. And what is he using? Ajuria, a nymph, a goddess. And goddess. He's calling Miss Prism a goddess. And Miss Prism. Algeria, my name is Leticia, doctor. My name is not uh, Algeria, my name is Leticia. I, I, it, it feels though that for, in the last time, sorry, the last time, it was Dr. Chosibal who has given her the name like uh, Leticia. But now he is calling her Algeria. So he is actually, uh, you can say, calling her, calling Miss Prism by the names of the goddesses. And you can easily understand what that is feeling is all about. Okay, then. I think what we must end here right now because I have promised not to take your much time because I, you, I think that you have already waited for. So, yes, if you have any question, you can ask right now. And we will be continuing in the next class from the same page. And that page is, you must remember, let me see. This is page number 26.
Okay, over to you. For a couple of days, my my throat is really hurting me. It really irritates me when I speak. It you know that the glands are vibrating all the time, and it makes me totally what I can tell. It really hurts. So rather I'm taking some 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 honey with, with warm water and all of the other things. But uh, still, you know that I have to just deliver the lectures in a single day. There are three or four. So whenever I speak, to then the gland they are again on the in the same worst position. Uh, and I was not thinking to miss any class because you know that we have to do this. Especially there are. Uh, few people even though who are asking us to do that you can send the recording messages to your students so they can also do that but I sometimes feel that okay I can do that but why not to just interact with the students directly so that is the reason that the purpose of this class is not only that I am speaking and you are listening you can also do that in the recording as well so I think that you must uh, be thinking about this text with a from a deeper point of view, and you must bring something valuable, something relatable on the surface whenever you read this text. And there is one thing that I also be, I was thinking about to do so that from now onwards, you all will be ready. You all will be ready because you also have the PDF files with you. So I can ask anyone because this is not only that I cannot teach you people. You know that already that I can. But I'm thinking that I think that you must also be thinking the same. You must also be taking the things, the relevant things in the discussions, the same as as I try to do that. So you also have to do the same. So you can read the text, you can relate some examples, you can allude some examples, you can give some references of the other texts, and whatever comes in your mind, so that you can also enjoy that textbook not as a listener but as a speaker and you will certainly uh, you will certainly do that i know that and on the other side when you will do that you will really enjoy the text because when you are teaching somebody when you are teaching or discussing the things that gives you real delight real pleasure so i wish and expect that you all will be doing the same from now onwards because i think that you are now in this position because you have understood the things the basics and all the other so if you will be doing this like whenever you are after some years after some time whenever you are serving so you will see that the each word that you have spoken here each word that you have taught here that will be with you every time so i think that you must take this experience and uh, you you will be enjoying this so just let me know that whoever is. Yes. I couldn't attend the last. Sorry. I said I couldn't attend the last class, but I want to say something about the importance of being on it. Actually, um, I'm sorry if I say something that hurts your emotion or anyone. We are not getting your voice clear. You are not clearly audible. I'm saying that. Am I audible? You are audible, but your voice is uh, broken sometimes. Yeah, not go clear. on. I was saying that I couldn't attend the last lecture, but. Um, I want to give some opinions about the importance of being earnest, and and I so I want to say sorry to them uh, if I say something uh, wrong or if I say something that hurts your emotions about the importance of being earnest. But I want to say that this isn't making any sense to me, and I don't like it. This is what we are studying in the sixth semester. No, I'm not satisfied. Okay, it's entirely okay. There is no 
uh, need to worry about. Yes, sometimes it happens that we do not like an genre, and we do not feel anything good into that. So it happens. So like, there is nothing because we, as a human nature, we can accept and reject the things at the same time. If it doesn't make any sense for you, to then there is no need to go deeper and deeper into this subject. You can then deal this subject only as a subject. Instead of you can be moved with the ideas of this subject. So I'm not asking you to get moved with the with the ideas of this subject. I I'm, I'm just simply saying that you have to deal the subject as a subject. It means that you are you are studying any any type of history. You are studying any type of subject. That I know that every subject is not according to our interest. Right? It is actually human nature, so you can feel so that if something you you do not like, so it is totally fine, and there is nothing I would say unnatural that you you did do. There is nothing unnatural. It is the nature of the human body. It is also my nature that I some, sometimes do not like any subject, and I do not feel that okay because uh, I think that in my. Because I, I I all the time enjoy everything. Because I have been given two subjects now. The one is uh, non prose, uh, sorry, non fiction prose. The second is American literature. American literature is my favorite, but Native American literature is my favorite. Not the other American literature that relates or talks about the 19th and the 20th century literature. But what I what I have to do now that I I just need to teach that to my students. Because if I say that okay, I don't like this subject, I won't teach you, then it will be not the loss of the student; that it will be the loss, uh, my loss as well. So what I need to do, I need to teach my my students that subject, whether I like or not. One of these other subject, uh, non-fiction prose, non-fiction prose, that is only the first subject that I am just teaching after five years, and now I can also see that. that Uh, subject that I teach my students, I am teaching it well because I know that I am just preparing for it. And on the other side, if I really like that subject or not, but it is my duty to do that. So now on the other side, Sarah, it is your duty, being a student, being a student, to read the subject, to study the subject. If you do not like this, that is another matter. But I think that you have to go with the flow because, as you already. Uh, doing this subject, so likeness and disliking that is another subject. But reading a subject or reading any course that is related to our, I would say, related to the course or related to uh, ourselves. So I think that we must go for that. Yeah, liking and disliking this can be another thing. It's totally fine. Sir, can be your. <coughs> Sir. क्या हम इंग्लिश लिटरेचर जस्ट इंग्लिश सीखने के लिए पढ़ रहे हैं ये क्या चीजें हैं मतलब मुझे कुछ समझ में नहीं आ रहा कि मे बी आई एम मे बी आई हैव लॉस्ट इंटरेस्ट इन दिस सब्जेक्ट और मे बी समथिंग एल्स बट ओके सर आई थिंक दैट आई थिंक दैट दिस इज नॉट रिलेटेबल टू ए टॉक रिलेटेबल फॉर एवरीवन आई थिंक दिस इज अ स्टूडेंट काउंसलिंग दैट वी कैन डू Like both of us, we can do that. I can do this on call, or I can do this on message, because I I don't think so that this will be uh, giving any interest, much interest for uh, creating much interest for the other students as well. So we can discuss this, and I will, I can give you satisfactory answers of to all your questions. Okay. So yeah, don't worry about that. Yeah, anyone else who needs to ask anything, anything about the subject that we are studying now. Okay then we can end this session right now